But I'm so frustrated Hello to my loneliness I guess that ignorance is bliss Take me back to before the new Rewind, take it out of cue Innocence can be a young man's game Signed up for the hall of shame I wish I knew Crazy big name yeah, We did yeah, a song yeah, together yeah, yeah. Fuck good rich friend Let's, Let's go, go. Accept certain obligations 
uh, to one another and uh, to future generations. Lastly, the freedom which so many Africans have fought for and died for come with responsibilities as well as rights. And among those are love and charity and duty and patriotism. That's what makes the African community great. Although we may come from vastly different stories and uh, different walks of life, we are one people who possess common values and common ideals, who celebrate in video excellence, but also share a recognition that together we can accomplish great and wonderful things that others we may never accomplish by ourselves. Congratulations to all the finalists tonight. You deserve recognition. Let no one tell you that you don't. You do deserve recognition. You all deserve celebration. You deserve to be inspired as African Australians. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. All right. Um, Charles, if you, if uh, you don't mind, can I invite the Honorable Julia Finn to make a few words, and after that, she will also make a very quick presentation of awards because she has an engagement, but uh, she has been with us all the way. I don't know, I don't remember any function we have had, and Honorable Julia Finn has not come. Even if she comes for five minutes, she will make sure she attends. So please welcome her to say a few words. Right, thank you. Thank you so much, Ronnie. And it's wonderful to be here again with all of you to celebrate the achievements of African Australians over the last 12 months. I want to begin, of course, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather and pay respects to their elders past and present and emerging. And also acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues, Jenny Leung and Lou Amato, and my good friend, the President of the Cumberland Chamber of Commerce, Emmanuel Selvarage. We have so many very high achievers in this room, but yeah, throughout Australia and throughout New South Wales, the African community has produced some incredible leaders across diversity of fields. As we heard earlier, there are three of the players in the Socceroos squad at the moment with African heritage, which is, yeah, that is incredible and it's very special. And even this afternoon, I went to watch the Wanderers game against Sydney FC and saw one of the rising Matildas, um, Princess Amini, uh, playing incredibly well. Uh, and that is just one of the many sports. Of course, Lovemore was a huge uh, success in boxing and, you know, is a very well-respected figure in the community. Even going back to b before the huge influx of arrivals, uh, it, sort of 15, 20 years ago. This community has gone through a lot. There have been uh, many people in this room and many of communities who have come here as refugees and settled successfully and are now really giving back to the Australian community and supporting the rest of the community. The the stereotype that has been perpetuated in the past, negative stereotypes about Africans, just aren't true. And we hear tonight, and if we just look at the number of awards that are going to be presented, um, there's an enormous amount of achievements to be celebrated. We need to still challenge those stereotypes and holding events like this, recognising the achievements across uh, music, fashion, sport, Business, law, medicine, science, all aspects of Australian life where African, African Australians are really achieving great things. It really does challenge those stereotypes but also celebrates what people have achieved. And many of those people have had years of disruption in the process of coming to Australia and making a new life here. So it's been all the more challenging and all the more rewarding to reach the pinnacle in their career. I wanted to make a special mention of a good friend of mine who's sitting up the back, who probably is getting one of these awards, but Blessing actually, Blessing is a fashion designer who's made some clothes for me in the past. She's from Nigeria originally. Uh, she actually had a show in Paris earlier this year. So now that COVID is over, um, her first shows were back in, were in Paris and I've been to many of her shows here in Australia but that one I watched online, it was spectacular. 
you know, and it is the fashion capital of the world. And to have an African Australian having a runway show there is amazing. Uh, there are so many of you in the room who really have achieved incredible things and you all deserve recognition, but we are here to really recognise people who have achieved something particularly special in the last 12 months and I'm looking forward to hearing about all of that, just as I am looking forward to seeing those three players in the Socceroos tomorrow morning beat Argentina and as somebody who usually supports Argentina that's hard for me to say but I want the Socceroos to win the only team I'd rather see win than Argentina and I hope that they will tomorrow um, they're an incredible squad and you know the diversity of that team is really reflective of of football in this country um, it is supportive of multiculturalism it is probably the most broadly multicultural sport in Australia and that is reflected in a national team and they are going to win tomorrow morning so I hope you all get up at the same time as me and watch it. But But thank you very much Ronnie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this what we're going to do. What I want you to do is just make her way to um, where the media wall is. And um, she's going to present over um, the awards. I'll request my team there, led by Kevin and Jennifer, to get ready for this, so that um, we can just have these um, awards um, go on. Because uh, even these people who are going to receive these awards, I think they could be, they have a handy and the, um, the game that um, they're going to, to play. So she's going to give up the Friend of Africa Award. This is how it's going to, to, to be. When your name is mentioned, come through that side, please. Get your award. Pause for a photo while handshaking Honorable Julia Faith. After she will step away and then you will take another official photo. So there are two official photos. One when you're receiving the award and then the second one when you're by yourself. If you have anyone with the camera and they want to take your, uh, your photos or video, please, this is the time that they can come close to the, to the, to the platform. So um, um, the first category is being announced by Charles. Charles, what category is this? So this is uh, the Friend of African Award presented by the Honorable Julia. Oh, yeah. Now, I believe this first category of award is going to our brother, Joseph Bacha. Bacha. Joseph is a director at uh, Telford Civil with uh, close to 20 years experience in arts, upwards from water, flood, and uh, analysis. Um, Joe has been supporting the African Australian Football Association for so many years, giving in his time and other resources to see the association grow and bring members of the African community. Next, the next person within this category of awards is going to Steve Erich. Steve is the president and director of Groundville and Eastwick Soccer Football Association, I am Steve, and also the chair of Open Sports Club. Among um, Steve has uh, assisted hundreds of African players at the associations over the years, paying for their seasonal soccer football registration fees and uh, giving them equipment. He's going to be represented by uh, our friend here, Joe. Yep, yep, you can come get an award on behalf of our state. Well, let's give him a round of applause as Joe receives this award. The next Cup School of Award is the Volunteer of the Year Award. Now, this uh, first person is going to Al Haji Jala. Al Haji Jala has been involved in the community sports since 2008. He was one of the first people to start the annual New South Wales African Cup Football Tournament in Sydney and is current treasurer of the Africa Australian Football Association. Welcome. <laughs> The person is going to go to Ibrahim Bar. Uh, Ibrahim is originally from Guinea and has been a volunteer with the Africa Australian Football Association in organizing and running the successful annual agricultural communities World Cup football tournament for over, with over 24 teams competing. Please welcome Ibrahim. It's the support to the African community. 
And the first one going to Kylie Harkins. Kylie is born and raised in Bankstown of Sydney and um, she's a found a second home in the African Australian community. For over 25 years she has been supporting the community in so many ways. I know from you, but before we let you go, I'm going to request uh, my good friend here, Noel, a well-known member of the African Australian community, to come and decorate you with a medal tonight, saying thank you very much for presenting the award. So please, you hand over, like, you know how they do it in football, yes. in athletics, so you're going to decorate the winner with uh, that medal. Well, thank you for attending our function. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for having me here again. Do you want to post a report? Welcome. Alright, can I now invite um, Honorable Jenny Leon, member for Newtown, to also give us a few words of encouragement and support. Honorable Jenny Leon. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, it's, it's absolutely a pleasure to be here with you all this evening. Um, I'll acknowledge our MC, Susan, or Charles and Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we are here on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. It always was and always will be First Nations land and we do that as a matter of protocol and we do it as a mark of respect but we also do it as a reminder that we need to put First Nations justice at the forefront of everything that we do, not just as a protocol when we start speaking but as a commitment to add the strength of our voice, of our commitment, of our networks, and our connections in community to add to the struggle for First Nations justice in this country because it was a colonized country, it is stolen land that we are on, and we must recognize the First Nations struggles for justice and give our commitment to those people. It's it's wonderful to be here as part of this celebration of African Australians and, and I say that as the Greens member for Newtown but also as the Greens anti-racism and multicultural spokesperson in New South Wales Parliament. And it's, it's really wonderful to hear the stories of the foundations, I appreciate that. Anything that is South Australian born makes me happy because I too was born in South Australia. So I like that connection between us. But one of the stories that I like to tell is the fact that while I was born in Adelaide, my dad came to Australia as an international student. Um, my, he met my mum who was from white working class Victoria and I was born in Adelaide. Over the course of my life, there's been periods of time where I don't feel that I'm welcome in the country of my birth, where people see me and position me as not someone that is Australian and that comes from here. And that is a challenge for us as a community. It's a challenge for us because what we need to do is break the stereotype of what it means to be Australian. What we need to do is to reshape the definition of Australian that celebrates the diversity and difference of our culture, of our communities, and of our networks. And so awards like this seek to do that, because what they seek to do is celebrate African Australians as people who are contributing to our community and part of our society. It's an incredibly important thing for us to do that as a community, and it's important for us to do it in a way that allows community to come together to recognise the value and importance of us being in a room with diverse people, of people from our same cultural heritage and background, because so often, Outside of spaces like this, the level of discrimination, the level of racism, and the level of vitriol that can occur to people on an individual or on a community level is unacceptable. And so we need spaces like this where we can come together and celebrate the achievements. And I have a controversial thing to say, which is controversial at an awards ceremony where we're celebrating high achievers. But I, I spoke a couple of years ago to some incredible Asian Australian young leaders who were overachievers in their own fields. And I said to them that actually we know we have succeeded as a diverse community that recognises that the default position isn't white when we don't have to just celebrate the high achievers. Like actually, I want to be out going, yeah, you don't have to prove yourself as the contribution you have made to this country because you are a high achiever. You are of value and of worth 
as an individual and a human in this community because of who you are, even if you haven't achieved great things. And that to me is what we need to do. We need to absolutely recognise and celebrate the incredible achievements that people have made tonight. And we need to sing it loud and proud. But we also need to recognise that we need to accept that our community will have achieved and moved beyond the idea of the discrimination and the lack of celebrating and recognition of difference when the person just going to work on the bus or the train doesn't get shouted at or abused. When the person that's sitting on the couch watching Netflix feels like they see themselves reflected on Australian TV. That's when we know, that's when we know that we have achieved great things as a multicultural country, as an anti-racist country. It is an absolute pleasure to be here celebrating the incredible high achievers tonight. I look forward to presenting the awards and I thank the incredible organisers and the amazing people that have pulled this celebration together. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you more and more on a function. Yeah, I'll be calling you back to hundred percent more so you can take our seat. Thank you. Yeah. All right, um, uh, Charles, um, I think let's also have speech number four, if we can. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite, um, uh, we just saw the message from the Premier on video, those who came live, the video, um, the video play, message from the Premier, but he also said I need someone to physically represent me. And here tonight, representing the Premier of New South Wales, is the Primary Secretary for Small Business, Honorable Law Amateur. Please welcome him to give us a few words. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, may I start first by acknowledging the traditional owners, both past, present, and emerging. But also by uh, acknowledge my parliamentary uh, colleague, uh, Jenny Young, member for New Sound. I know that uh, Julie, unfortunately, has left. But also acknowledge uh, New South Wales State Coordinator, Ronnie Kakari. The, uh, Mr. Charles uh, Cocker, the ACT State Coordinator, and Mr. Emmanuel Silvaris, the President of Cumberland Chamber of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be here tonight to represent the Premier of New South Wales, Don Perte. For the past 10 years, celebrations of African Australians New South Wales has hosted this annual awards dinner. It is truly a wonderful initiative. It has been a platform to celebrate achievement and success across an incredible range of fields and endeavours, from sport to politics, academia to entertainment, community engagement to culinary pursuits. The awards themselves have been a powerful statement. You cannot put this community in a box, nor can you stereotype what success looks like. The African Australian community is diverse, growing and successful in so many different ways. The success we celebrate tonight built upon a long tradition of success in our state. People from African descent were first present on the first fleet and played an important role in the early development of New South Wales. A lot of people don't know this part of history. So Australians might not be uh, familiar with this uh, history, which is a shame. But I'm thinking of someone like John Randall, a former slave in the American colonies. He fought for the British during the American Revolution, was transported to New South Wales, and became one of the governor's trusted gamekeepers, hunting kangaroos to keep the colonies supplied with meat. In the early 1800s, he then joined the New South Wales Corps as a drummer, and was part of the band that helped arrest Governor William Bly basically kicked him out of office. I know this organisation has a passion for the arts and music, including African drumming. Well, I guess you can say that a drummer of African descent once helped have a throw in New South Wales government. No, no less, jokes aside, the story of John Randall shows that people from Africa or of African descent have been coming to New South Wales more, more, for more than two centuries. African Australians have deep roots in our state, are an integral part of our social fabric. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to congratulate this organisation. The celebration of African Australians for shining a light on so many more recent good news stories through this awards program. While the fields or disciplines might vary, 
all our winners are united by a strong commitment to serve. The spirit of service finds expression within the wider African-Australian community. I am proud of the role our state has played in welcoming so many from Africa to our shores. Just so you know, my, my parents were born in Africa a long, long time ago. New South Wales has been the launch pad for many great success stories in politics and business, sports, arts and culture, and everything in between. Our nation is now home to people from every corner of the globe and all walks of life. I am proud and I'm sincerely proud. This includes so many people from within the African diaspora. Together, you've enriched the life of our state and helped make it the dynamic, multicultural society it is today. I'd like to also acknowledge um, what Jenny said earlier about discrimination. And I certainly know, I grew up in the early days, and discrimination, uh, I think, was a lot harder and a lot more unacceptable than what it is today. And it was very, very difficult growing, growing up. But I think we've come a long way since then. And as time progresses, I, I think this nation will be, be one that the whole world will learn. We acknowledge and champion and, and look upon as as the um, as a true a true success story. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to congratulate all of tonight's award winners. They are part of a remarkable decade of achievement, and I'd like to thank Celebration of African Australians New South Wales for hosting this event and creating the platform to create these great men and women and their stories. I hope you will have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable. Please come in here and give another round of applause, please. Thank you, Honourable. And they can take a seat. Yeah, thank you. Now, the next person, I think, let me introduce them, isn't it? Yeah, we just made out someone talk to us about um, celebration of African Australians got um, a charity status. And the man behind that was none other than the state coordinator from um, ACT, Australian Capital Territory. He played a very big part in making sure that we're charity, so you can donate to us, you can, why should I talk all that? The man himself is here to tell us what the charity is about. Charles, please, let's um, have you. Yes, so thanks very much. Now, let me briefly, I um, just want to run through this briefly with you, and maybe later on we'll try to get this uh, updated. Now, uh, celebration of African Australian is as it's registered as a charity organization with the Australian Charities and Non-for-Profit Commission, that's the ACNC, and so we are fully registered. Now, the good thing that has also happened to us, as a charity organization, we also want to start, we often uh, uh, say, we will be looking at trying to, to establish an African cultural center. And so what also happened is that this African cultural center provides this platform for everything we're doing as an organization, and also for us to be able to have a center for Africans, and a center that we can exhibit, a center that we can showcase the true Africans and all our activities and the functions, and also more especially, a place that we're able to support our artists and bring up our young African artists here in the ACA, I mean here in, in Australia. At the moment, we don't have that, you know, and everybody's all over the place, you can see Bob Man and, and all of these guys cannot really, they are not recognized as artists, do you know that? Our artists are not really being recognized within the mainstream as artists, so we start. I think we need to come up with something. Uh, if we don't support ourselves, I don't think who else is going to support us. So one, we need to support our artists. We need to support both our artists, those that are doing uh, in the in different in different artistic forms. So that is the reason now we establish an African Cultural Center gift fund. Now this African Cultural Center gift fund is a fund that has been endorsed as a DGR as a DGR charity status. Meaning, if you donate to the, towards that fund. You will get a you will get a tax deductible uh, 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 status receipt. Okay, um, so meaning if you donate to the um, African Cultural Center gift fund, you actually can claim those donations from tax. That's very good. So we thought this would help us. Now we want to establish an African Cultural Center here in in in, in, in New South Wales. 
the place that Rooney and the rest of the team and all of us can find a home and a home as Africans. And that's an organization. As you have had, we grow and we need to keep growing. And we're trying to rebrand ourselves again. With time, we actually will be going into trying to call ourselves an African cultural center. A big center and a place, an establishment we have as an infrastructure and a place that we can all celebrate Africa. And so if you got this, so today we have our those QR codes on your table. Feel free, you can take it home, all right? But at the same time, I want to, uh, we, we are making an appeal to you that uh, you can take this home. Uh, it, uh, we put a lot you know, on your table, so feel free to take it home. And uh, what you can also do, it doesn't matter whatever amount you want to put towards uh, fundraising, especially as we begin to approach tax time, which could be a very good time. And if you know business people, what a great place for you to donate to us. So we just want to understand that celebration of African Australia has got a gift fund, and this gift fund is a gift fund that you can donate to, and, and you have a very good tax benefit when you donate to this organization and to our gift fund. And it helps us. For instance, we're doing lots of activities um, um, in the ACT, where we're having lots of people really donate to our organization. In fact, as you know, we've been hearing people speaking here, um, next month we are putting together um, during Australia Day the very first, what we refer to as an Afro Aboriginal um, showcase. Event. That's the first that's happened in the ACT, and so we're trying, we're working with our Aboriginal culture, but our artists, dancers, and performers, we're getting Africans, we're getting Aboriginal dancers and our performers and artists to showcase in Africa. It's a great way we're also celebrating Australia being the very same country we all call home. And so please, 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 we can only do that when we have funds. Yeah. To put in an event like this involves money, it involves funds, and sometimes there are many other people that would have preferred them to be here tonight, but because um, uh, maybe they can't make it and they are not able to come. And so please, we want to uh, encourage you all. That's why we place this on your table. Uh, you can donate any amount, but most especially we also want you to direct other people that you know, business people, entrepreneurs, um, organizations, companies. Uh, they can get in touch with Rooney and, and look on our website and everything else. Um, let them get in touch. If they want to make big and larger donations, especially during uh, this financial year, please, please, please. What a great uh, success next year, this time, we'll say, um, through the generous donation from this community, we're able to have uh, it's an African cultural center. Uh, we have uh, it's an office where we really and the rest of the team will run an administrative function. But I want to say thank you very much. It's actually, from, uh, I call it uh, uh, voluntary. Uh, it's there uh, uh, any amount, OK? So you can only use your phone, easy. Just your phone number. I mean, just your phone. Use your phone. It takes you straight to the. Uh, uh, to the page, we have a national account, so people can make donations from anywhere. So you can also share it. You can take photo reel, you can share it with other people too, and just let them know that they can make this donation to us. You'll hear more as time goes on. Thanks very much. Thank, thanks, Charles. Can you please round of applause for Charles? And I think if I ask you what you think Charles does out of being an MC, you will guess. The guy is a pastor. No one is talking like that. He's also a marriage referent, so you can tell where he's coming from. But please listen to this call and uh, let's do the info. Now we're going for another marathon where awards are going to be given out. In the meantime, dessert has been served. There is still more food. If you want some dessert, just uh, walk a little bit slowly as we get prepared for the next year, um, segment and have something to eat. There is also coffee and tea there. And then we're just resetting to have the awards. Um,
says he is overwhelmed. And this is not very chart. The next capture is the humanitarian award. Now this is also constitutionally presented by yeah, the one is still there, thanks very much. So the humanitarian award. This award actually goes to people who are um, um doing their work in um not only in uh, in Australia but in other countries. Because the foundation we chose is called the Nurturing Minds Foundation. Are you here representing the Nurturing Minds Foundation? Are you are you here? Well, I think around the world is there. Thank you. I've got a call from Bukam that they are an association now that's after. Uh, well done. Thank you for the work you're doing for the indigenous, indigenous community and connecting to the African Australian community in uh, the South Wales. Well done. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Can we give them another round of applause, please? Um, our next, next, next our next award is the Community Engagement Award. And it will still be presented by Mr. Yeah. Emanuel. Yeah. So the, right. the, the first award that goes to this gentleman, already from South Sudan, is the first one that's here tonight from South Sudan. He's the current president of the African Australian Football Association and has been part of the progress of African communities in Western Sydney for over 15 years. Please welcome a better alpha if you're here. Uh, so We've recognized this association, it's best in progress part. It was established in 2019 and it's doing lots of work for the cold communities and the African Australian communities by organizing football tournaments. Welcome, Abeka. Thank you. Received that tournament. On the, uh, that time, I call on behalf of the association. Okay, there we go. People of the association, you are footballers. Yes, run, 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 run. One, two, three. Come on. And the president wants you to photo here quickly. Yeah, there we go, Ibrahim. Out there, everyone in the association. Yes, TV is not here. Give us some music. Thank <laughs> you. 
request a um, moment if you have seen it here. Come and receive the award on behalf of Sydney West Horticultural Services. Thank you so much. Sydney West is also doing a lot of work for the African Australians across um, the state. So please welcome Premier to receive the award on behalf of Sydney West Horticultural Services. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Now, the next one, another association that we are covering tonight, the last one that Mr. Emmanuel is giving up, is um, the Zimbabwe Association in Australia. Can someone represent your organization? Come and receive the award on behalf of Zima. Anyone from Zima? Zimbabwe? Can we take the award back? Come on, Zim. Who's coming? Uh -huh. Yeah, come on in, please. Come on, DJ. Welcome in. The Zimbabwe Association in uh, Australia. They're doing lots of services, bringing African Australians together and making sure that. Uh, Thank Sierra Leone. Now, 
is now prominent and a very important figure in the African community here over two decades. She is a key leader among our peers and voice for women empowerment in our community and the wider African Australian community here. Miata Kamara. Miata is here tonight. Welcome, Miata. Thank you. Please, can you come for her at least? Now we have to Sarah Lucas. Thank you, Honorable Jenny. Thank you so much. Okay, our next category of award is the Academic Excellence Award. Now, this award is going to be presented by Honorable Lau Amato. Please, Lau, please, can we give him a round of applause as he comes to make this presentation? Pretty much so uh, when he presents this award, he probably wants to run off. Now, these are the powerful... Um, Powerful profiles vary. If you haven't had any powerful ones, listen out. The first person with a vast academic background, founder of Caring Hearts Foundation, 
so many degrees, so many masters, also planning to do a PhD. Welcome, Barbara Mutanda, Academic Excellence Award. So it's a wonderful opportunity to see our African women ascending into such educational level. Please let's give her an applause. Thank you very much. They are very well models. You want to dance or you want to shake or oh yeah. from Ghana probably. Ghana. Qualified pharmacist who is also a medical doctor. She's an associate lecturer at the University of New South Wales. A caring person who seeks to inspire others and also has, um, imp imp is a mig does a lot with migrant health and literacy and outcomes in Australia. Please put your hands together for Dr. Christabel Abalo. If you're here. <laughs> The next person we're going to invite here, originally from Nigeria, is a senior lecturer, academic, led Russell Health School of Medicine, Western University. She has a doctor of philosophy from Queensland University. So we have people here with very, very wonderful CVs. It's a University of Technology. A Master of Science with distinction from Aston University in Birmingham ah. and a Doctor of Optometry from Abia State University of Nigeria. He has also made 91 publications with over 1,000 citations, won a $4.5 million grant in preventing diabetes. Please welcome Dr. Uchenchenku Levy. Uchenchenku Levy. academic category is uh, the brain behind Glow Healthcare Agency. She has established her own business, a trusted provider of healthcare services located in Sydney, um, is uh, managed by a team of experienced staff. Please welcome with a master's in nursing, Jennifer Kasule. Welcome. London. Now, we'll go to our next category of award. That is going to be the Leadership Award. And so presented by still, Honorable yeah, Law Amato. Still presented by Amato, The yeah. first category. We have only one award in this category. Very, very interesting, this one. Um, where is she from? Can I guess? I can't see where she's from. But um, she's the president of Sydney Pan-African Association. This is the only society in the University of Sydney campus for students, domestic and international, that want to share their African culture. Please welcome Fadzai Aida Katsande. Very young achievers. Fadzai has several research projects with major governments and non-government organizations, and she's the ambassador for African women in Miss Sahara pageant 2021-2022. Next category, Charles. Our next category of award, ladies and gentlemen, is the Professional Excellence Award. Still, the Honorable will continue to make these presentations. The, next, the first person in this category, Professional Excellency, is um, originally from Kenya. She's an electrical engineer and one of the first African women to go to work in the mines of Western Australia, inspiring other women to follow suit. 
She was a top contender in the 2018 World Champion of Public Speaking held in Chicago, USA. Please welcome Kangeni Starrett to receive the award for professional excellency. Hey. Sleep to make sure I wake up for the soccer roots game. 
Um, good evening, everyone, and I want to acknowledge the Garigal people of the URA Nation for the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting on today. And I want to acknowledge the owners past, present, and emerging, and anyone of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander background in the room. I want to acknowledge our dignitaries, um, the Honorable Lou Amato, the Parliamentary Secretary, Secretary for Small Business. I want to also acknowledge um, Jenny Liang, and um, of course, um, Mr. Emmanuel, who is still uh, present with us here. Look, I, I was invited, and thanks to Ronnie and the team for inviting me to come and um, inspire everyone, but I'll, I'll give some remarks, but usually I if there's an opportunity like this, then I use that opportunity to share some key messages. I think takeaway messages are, are really important. There's a role that we need to play in society at the moment. So um, I want to congratulate the recipients of, of the awards. It, it's an acknowledgement of the outstanding work, work that all of us are doing in um, in Australia, and it also raises the profile of African communities here. Gives a positive image of our settlement uh, in Australia. Um, and by the way, as um, was mentioned earlier, um, African diaspora Australian settlement dates back to the 17th, um, to 1788. Um, and so Australia is a great country with a lot of opportunities. Um, and we've seen those opportunities, um, some individuals taking those opportunities recently. And finally, Australia is beginning to recognize the ability of people from African backgrounds in certain fields. Um, and we're, I'm sure all of us are really happy to see the, the three brothers uh, representing Australia uh, as part of the Socceroos. Um And there are a lot of, uh, you know, achievers in a lot of fields. Uh, we were complaining about the lack of diversity in, in some sports, but now basketball, we see Africans there, soccer, Africans, netball, um, and you name it. In academia, you know, some great people, leaders. You know, during COVID, it was not federal health or only New South Wales health that reached out to grassroots communities. It was the community leaders from African backgrounds who would sit in meetings every single week um, working with um, the local health districts and actually discussing how best, best to design messages that would make sense to, to, to our communities. So, um, and that has gone, you know, that was unpaid work and that should really be, be acknowledged. Um, so in, in terms of achievements, we're really doing great, but like I said, this is a platform, and I want also to make sure that I don't leave here by acknowledging that although there are some positives, there is a sec certain section within our African population that is struggling a little bit, and that's uh, young people. Um, some of us are getting older, so by African standards, by the way, I'm still you know, I'm a young man, <laughs> okay? Um, but, but we are getting older. We've been here, you know, in leadership for 17 to nearly 20 years, okay? And uh, you, you kind of think, okay, what kind of legacy do we want to leave behind, you know, as leaders? Um, and I worry about the next generation because, um, some of them are really struggling. 
the, a lot of interactions in the line in, in the line of work that I do. I come across stories of African young people interacting with um, with law enforcement agencies and interactions with the criminal justice system. So we should not forget that. What is our role as leaders to support these young people to also become high achievers like every one of us? They have potential. Um, and sometimes they, you know, people get off the rails a little bit, but, you know, with support, they can come back on track and they can, you know, they can be somebody as well. Uh, my challenge as well, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, people from legal background receiving awards here. These young people, we need to think about what we can do to support these young people. The platforms that, you know, we sit on, we shouldn't be silent. We should be talking about some of these issues. Um, the lawyers, you know, these young people are there. Lack of quality legal support impacts on how individual cases, uh, the outcome of individual cases. And so it's important if you can, you know, uh, volunteer your time to go spend two, one or two hours with a young person, support them with their legal issues and their families. It's really important. So on that note, I just want to, to end here. But I thank uh, Ronnie and the team for organizing this event. And I really would like to congratulate Ronnie. Let's please give him a, a, a hand because <laughs> nine years he has been able to bring everyone together every year. You know, um, this is probably a smaller group, but there were occasions where maybe double this room, okay? And people have been consistent and coming. So let's support each other. Let's support Ronnie and the team. And let's continue to nominate people and bring to their attention the achievements that, you know, we as Africans are making in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Clement, for such a, a big call and very important to come this end with a great uh, Pride in you. Please, before you go again, uh, could we have someone decorate you tonight? And uh, again, this is a height challenge. Height challenge, we're going to see how Susan will reach up there to decorate our own Clement. And thank you so much for the keynote address. Please, a big round of applause for Clement. Thank you so much. That's it. All right, and the middle goes to Clement. Thank you. Shall have it. Pause. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as those photos are taken, we have one more category to give awards. This is the biggest, I think. These people, we are giving them what we call the Champion Award. For you to receive the Champion Award, you have, you have excelled in different fields. That we cannot just pin you on one specific field. These are champions, and that we shall be um, giving them their awards as we come to the very conclusion. But before that, I'd like to invite um, Settlement services to also give us a very brief, uh, brief talk. Um, was that you, Anna? Anna? Yes, please uh, welcome Anna from Settlement Services International to just uh, give us a key communication that uh, she has for the group. A hand of applause for Anna. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, we are from Settlement Services International. And we're just going to take a few moments of your time just to tell you a little bit about our organization and, and what we do and also what we want to share with you today. Um, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Anna Morris. I'm one of the managers for foster care and settlement services. And my name is Tari Mafomo and I'm the manager covering Hunter and Central Coast. Uh, Morris, I'm one of the So while settlement services have uh, cover a number of areas, we are from the uh, multicultural foster care team. Um, we are the lead in practice in multicultural foster care. Um, we have a particular focus to keep our children connected to their culture, religion, 
and language. The Multicultural Foster Care Programme seeks to recruit carers who can respond in a culturally responsive manner. The carers should be open to options of permanency and care for children and young people from the, from the same backgrounds or more. Um, the Multicultural Foster Care Programme emphasises maintaining the bonds of ethnic background, religion and language when providing a foster home for children. Um, foster care offers a home while their own family cannot provide them with a safe home. Um, children in our foster care program are from the age of 0 to 18. Um, and depending on the circumstances, a child may be in foster care for a few days, weeks or years. Whilst um, the aim is to return young people back to their home, that's not always possible. And sometimes children will remain in foster care until adulthood. Um, thanks, Anna. I just wanted to take a moment to ask you to look around, just for a second, look around at the people sitting in this room. Um, think about it in 10 years' time, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Who is going to be sitting in those chairs? So some of the young people that we have um, in our program are African young people that um, are in placements, so in placements in forms that are not culturally matching. So when I say culturally matching, they, they might be placed with a person that is not from an Af African background. And the idea is we want to raise our children to be able to, to be comfortable with, with, with who they are, to identify as Africans, and to be able to be sitting in those chairs that you're sitting in today. But we need to work together. We need to work as a partnership, as a team. We need to collaborate. And that's why we're here today, to just bring it out to the community to say we need your help. We've got children from all parts of um, parts of Africa. Yeah, and, um, and they are needing people to look after. Like Anna said, some of them are small little babies uh, and up to 18 years old. And uh, there's lots of opportunities for all of us to come together and find a solution to make sure that our children are in placements that couch mesh them. And uh, as part of our work, we also hear uh, people saying that the CGO, the Department of Service Recovery of the Kids, uh, from parents because of the different circumstances, and the, the, the specific, uh, when it comes to uh, looking at those of kids, we always want to make sure that those of kids are responding to different families. First of all, as my colleague said, we want those kids to be at least looked up, looked up by the people of the country. That's an uh, obligation, that's what you want. That's why the point of view you are uh, that, as my colleague said, we have kids coming from different backgrounds, not only from Africa, but our friends make sure it was kids are going from the families. At least we have families of Africa uh, background people that are keen to help on those. That's why we are here to say that uh, we we need to work with every person from a future to commit level, engage with to make sure that if we have kids that come to uh, you know come across, at least we have people really to care for them. So there's responsibilities uh, ranging from uh, short term uh, to long term. So you can look at those kids from a few weeks to months, years, also permanent. That's why we, if you hear that there's a kids uh, that have been removed from their parents uh, and they're from African background, for example, please, uh, you know, act as a parent, you know, think how sad it is uh, for that child who's looking for someone to come And you could imagine if we take that kids from African background, we place that child to, for example, with the uh, Asian family or European family. Uh, yes, it is no option. Yes, that child will still go to that narrow to uh, that child will still look after by that family. But we want to make sure that the, our first priority is to make sure that child from African background is looked after by our people from, you know, from African background. That's why. So we want to make sure the cultural match is for our priority. But if there's no option, that's how we end up looking for plan B. Plan B that means that the child will be placed under uh, someone's care. So please, yeah, this is our call. Uh, those of kids are our kids, and we should make sure that we look after them. That's the way we can help the system. That's the way we can 
collaborate and also work with the government here to make sure that we all become uh, in charge of our own kids. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Settlement Services Australia for that uh, big announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the final part of the awards. And like I said, we are going to the Champion Awards. And uh, I will request our representative of the Premier, Parliamentary Secretary for Small Business, Honorable Law Amate, to come back and present the last awards. And uh, Charles is also coming to join me here. So if you know you're in this category, get ready. Okay, and uh, we shall be reading out uh, quickly the awards here. Um, champion award, like I said, these are all rounders. They are qualified in nearly every aspect that we can think of, and that we can categorize them as just being the champion of award. The first one in this category, where you came from, from Nigeria, listen to this. He's a research project coordinator, biostatistician, and academic at the Faculty of Medicine and Health University in Sydney. She's also the owner and head of chef at the Chapel of Teacher Sydney, a best of Nigerian meal catering service and uh, Jimani beauty, an e commerce beauty supply, is a bit specializing in her extensions and Afro hair products. She has sat on the board of the United Nations Association of Australia, representing young professionals in New South Wales. She is also a public health master, she owns a public master, health master and a PhD degree in Puff and Senior. Please welcome Dr. Joseph Mokrani. and urban development um, development now Vincent is an institute associate with Western Sydney University and fellow planning Institute Australia graduate of Australia Institute of company directors Vincent has held manager position with the local and state government art sectors and held roles with Australia University he is called Dr. Ugo who has also made contributions to community, non-government, and government sectors in Australia. He is currently chair of Africa Health Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me make welcome Dr. Vincent Uku. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
Please help me welcome Tawala Mutsule. Tawala Mutale. Mutale. Tawela was also named a um, was also named a finalist in the Australian government's top 100 for 2022. Well done. Can I now call on um, our the, uh, the challenge Australia participant Susan to decorate our guest of honor with a medal and thank him for presenting the awards. All right, and um, with uh, with a medal in you, Honourable Law, I re I request you to remain right there to also say thank you for the people who have organized this event. The first one all the way from uh, Canberra, can we please put our hands together for Charles Coker, who has been the MC tonight. He also receives a medal of appreciation, Charles.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Kenneth Tussumira, Kenneth Tussumira is here there, please quickly. He's also been demanding the machines, making sure that these are swingers are doing on time. He's a small man, but he leads very big swingers. They're all the way from uh, wherever we get here. Kenneth, please go down for tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, all right, for this medal, may I please ask you, please rise up on your feet as we just in acknowledgement and appreciation to the man behind this room planning tonight, Mr. Rudy, for all the planning and organization, what is our effort is doing. Please go to the report, I do appreciate it. Get everything is small and I'm glad to see you guys. The new software is still going to be there. Really? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And right now, I'll give Noel. Okay, last, uh, please take a seat. And Noel is just going to pass the photo of to all of us. Noel, welcome. Before I give the vote of thanks, I will answer. I have an like announcement that I would like to share with you. Uh, the, the UN Working Group of Experts, uh, that means like a United Nations Working Group of Experts. Uh, uh, on people of African descent uh, are visiting Australia for the first time in history. Uh, they've been in Australia from 12th December to 20th, and they would like to meet many, many African people, not only in the New South Wales, but around the country. So the, the main purpose of their visit is to receive as much information as possible regarding the human rights issues facing the persons of African descent in Australia. And also, uh, they'll be focusing on issues such as uh, the administration of an access uh, to justice, law enforcement, racial discrimination, any disparity between uh, provisions of support services in the areas of health, employment, housing, history, and the legacy of past violations, black burning, refugee policy, and racism in the media. Uh, they would like to hear from everyone. That's why if you need, if you need further details, uh, I'm happy to share with you uh, more because you are looking at many people to come forward and meet with those people. Uh, we'll be meeting at the Western University. And of course, I'll be happy to share with you more information. But last but not least, uh, let me uh, ask the Ronnie asked, I want to thank everyone who has been behind this great event. As you all know, such event requires uh, logistics, financial support, and most importantly, your presence. That's why, first of all, I want to thank the whole committee who has been behind this wonderful event tonight. And also, I want to extend my thanks to all our, our members of parliament who are here tonight. Uh, many people representing the different uh, services, and more, of course, uh, many community leaders gathered here tonight. There's nothing uh, that makes me proud to see young people in this audience, uh, showing you that uh, we, we have the better future. And that's why I was very proud to hear uh, the, our the miss you know, speaking on behalf of the young people. So let's please always support this great initiative because that's how we see that many African Australians we are flourishing. And to see that people are being excellent in every single sector makes us to be proud of who we are. And please use this knowledge uh, to continue to inspire other people. And most importantly, people from, especially from a political sphere, please take the key take note or the key takeaway message is we African Australians, we are proud of who we are. We are part of this country, and we are ready to contribute as we've been always doing it so. So thank you so much, Ronnie. And of course, 
Our brother is here with you, and of course, as you can see, many people are here tonight. Uh, I can take a message away saying that African Hoseans, we always be proud of who we are, and we are Hoseans as others, and we will forward for you working and supporting you in this great initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, that marks a function. We have so many leaders of apologies from ministers that we didn't say because of time. But we got the letter of apology, the apology from our uh, Honorable John D, the member for Paramata, Hogan Lady Message for the celebration of African Australians, David Elliott, Minister for Transport, Minister for Veterans, Minister for Western Sydney, also sent a congratulatory message, which has been putting on our Facebook, and also Honorable Steve Kampa, message for him, for the winners, and so many ambassadors. The media world is here for photos. Please feel free to come in your head photos, but also it's time for music and networking. Don't just run, go to your neighbor, say hello, find out what they do and that. Just let's talk and network. Again, we're now open for music and two Please stay here.